In this video, we're actually going to take a look at the center of mass in a one or two dimensional system. In my last video, I said it was just going to be one dimensional, um, but I'm just putting them together into one video. So what exactly is a moment? A moment is a measure of the turning effect of a force. So we're talking about mass and we're talking about how far that mass or force is away from the distance to the axis of rotation. So the best way that I can sort of explain this to you is to think about a seesaw. And if you balance two objects of unequal mass, we would need the moment on the left and right to be equal. So let's say I have a kid over here who weighs 20 grams and a kid over here who weighs 30 grams. And they're both two meters from the center right now. Now this would be a very boring ride for both parties because this dude would be up in the air and this dude would be on the ground just the whole time because the 30 gram um, child obviously weighs more. Now if I wanted to balance them so that they could basically be on this straight line that I have drawn and not have their feet on the ground, how could I do that? Well, what, this is where moment comes into place. And moment, again, is force times distance. So if I think about the left-hand side, the moment over here is 20 times 2, which is 40. And the moment on this side is 30 times 2, which is 60. I need those two moments to equal one another in order for this to work. So what if I moved this guy in a little bit? So let's try to find what distance should I put the heavier kid in order for this to work. So I know that I need the moment of the left, which is 40, to equal the force, which in this case is 30, times the distance, which we're calling x. So if I do that, I can see that I would need this um, child to be four-thirds of a meter. So about right here, if I put my little guy, now all of a sudden this is much more fun for everybody because now the moments on each side are equal to one another because now I have the moment is 30 times four thirds, which is 40. And so now because the moments are equal, I could actually balance those kids up in the air. So let's take this a bit further and talk about the moment about the origin. And the moment about the origin is essentially just the tendency of the system to rotate about the origin. So again, I have another seesaw. And my question is, is this going to tilt like our last example in one way or the other, or is my system in equilibrium? And essentially that is what we're trying to find we can find the moment by computing the sum of the products of the weight and distance of each value. So essentially, I'm going to take my first mass times the distance my first mass is from the center, plus my second mass times the distance my second mass is from the center, all the way whoops, through however many values I have. And if I end up with this moment equaling zero, then it's in equilibrium. So that's what I'm looking for. So let's take a look at this example and see if it's in equilibrium. And that is to say, could I balance these balls where they are right now so that none of them go anywhere? And again, that's just, let's just do the math. So I'm going to use a coordinate system, and I've already put the little dash marks, but this is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and we get the idea. And on this, this is the positive side. Now this is how it would make sense 
for us to, instead of setting them equal to each other, as we did in the last example, if I just add everything together, the negative side should balance with the positive side and therefore give me a sum of zero. So let's take a look at negative six times 20. Uh, let's do it in the opposite order just because mass is 20 and the distance is negative six. Mass is 10 and the distance is negative three and mass is 20 and the distance is negative one. And then I'm going to add the right side. So the mass is 20 and the distance is two. The mass is 10 and the distance is five. And the mass is 10 and the distance is seven. So let's see what we come up with. I end up with negative 120 plus negative 30 plus negative 20. And then on the positive side, I end up with 40, 50, and 70. So negative 120 plus negative 30 is negative 150, plus negative 20 is negative 170. On the positive side, 40 plus 50 is 90, plus 70 is 160. And therefore, this has a moment of negative 10. And the issue then is that this side is heavier, and so this is the rotation that would happen. So this brings us into our discussion of the center of mass. The center of mass is the location in which we could move the fulcrum in order to put our system in equilibrium. And if you've taken statistics already, then you understand that X bar just means it's an average. And that's what we're doing here. We're essentially finding the average to know where to move that fulcrum. And so M sub zero is just our moment. And I'm not going to compute that again because on our last slide, we just computed that moment to be negative 10. And M is just the total mass. So M, I'm just going to take uh, 20 plus 10 plus 20 plus 20 plus 10 plus 10. So that's just taking the weight of each of those values. And that gives me 90. So if I want to know the center of mass for this system, then I have negative 10 over 90 or negative 1 ninth. Now, what does that tell me? That tells me that my fulcrum is really super close to where it needs to be, but it needs to be at negative one ninth, which is probably right about here. And so if I just shifted it over just a little bit, then my system would be in equilibrium. Before we continue on, let's just do one more practice. So if you would, press pause and do this question on your own. And when you're ready, press play to see how you did. So remember that we need to find just a couple of things in order to find the center of mass. The center of mass is the moment divided by the total mass. And the moment is found by taking each mass multiplied by its distance. So four times negative three, seven times negative two, eight times positive two, and five times four gives me negative 12 plus negative 14 plus 16 plus 20. The negatives give me negative 26, and the positives give me 36, and so my moment is 10. So again, not in equilibrium. So the center of mass would then tell us where could we move, move that fulcrum so that the system is in equilibrium. The M value is just the total mass. So that's just taking all of the masses and adding them together. So four plus seven is 11, plus eight is 19, plus five is 24. So X bar would be 10 over 24 or reducing 5 over 12. So that is the center of mass. Now we want to take the same concepts that we've been learning about and apply it to a two-dimensional system. And if you'll notice now, instead of just one value for the moment, we have two values. The first is the moment about Y. 
And if you'll notice, the moment about y is taking the mass of each object multiplied by the x value. So you might say, well, why the x value? Because this is the moment about y. But the moment about y is talking about the distance of each value or each point from the y axis. And therefore, we would use the x value because the x value would tell us how far each object is from the y axis. Whereas the moment of x obviously would give us the distance from the x axis, which is why we're using the y value for each point. So essentially, we're just going to find the sum of each object's mass times its distance from the x or y axis, respectively. And then, of course, m is still going to be the total mass. So the center of mass is now a coordinate, x comma y. And it is found by taking the moment of y, which makes sense because we're using all of those x values, divided by the mass, and then the moment of x divided by the mass. So let's take a look at this example together. We are given a system, and the system has four points, and each of those values on the coordinate plane are the weights or masses of those points. So for instance, at the point um, negative three comma two, that mass is one. This is the point negative one, zero, and that has a mass of three. This is the point 4, 3, and it has a mass of 2, and 2, negative 2 has a mass of 4. So what we need to do is we need to find the moment of y, and the moment of y is just the mass multiplied by the x value. And so let's go ahead and do that. If I take the first mass of 1 and multiply it by the x value of negative 3, add the mass of 2, multiply it by the x value of 4, the mass of 3, multiply it by the x value of negative 1, and the mass of 4 times the x value of 2. That will give me the moment of y. So 1 times negative 3, 2 times 4, 3 times negative 1, 4 times 2. And so I end up with negative 6 and 16, which gives me 10. Now let's take a look at the moment of x. And again, the moment of x is just each mass multiplied by the y value. So again, 1 and then times the y value of 2. The mass of 2 times the y value of 3. A mass of 3 times the y value of 0 and a mass of 4 times the y value of negative 2 gives me 2 plus 6 plus 0 plus negative 8, which gives me 0. So my center of mass can be found by taking each of those values divided by the total mass. So m just means take the mass of each and add them up. So 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, which is 10. So what is my center of mass? X bar, Y bar is simply to take the moment of Y, which is 10, divided by the mass, which is 10, comma, the moment of X, which is zero, divided by the mass, which is 10, which gives me a center of mass of one comma zero. So in this system, this point is the center of mass. Coming up next, we are going to find the center of mass of a planar lamina, which is, of course, where calculus will come into play.